Hello everyone, this is Deva. I'm the CTO here at Live Planet, and I'm super excited to be showing you all a testnet demo of our upcoming video NFT platform, which is the first platform specifically designed for videos. And uh, we are in integrating this platform into Filecoin, which allows us to do a whole bunch of innovations that haven't been seen before in the NFT industry, like proof of ownership, which guarantees the longevity of the NFT because we construct a proof of ownership for the NFT and write it down to Filecoin, which lets you establish the ownership of the NFT without having to rely on an entity or an issuing entity. And because this platform runs on Videocoin's native blockchain, it, is, it consumes extremely low gas fees and the platform itself is very scalable, all while maintaining um, trust and interoperability with the Ethereum mainnet. The Videocoin network also processes the files and videos that are uh, landing on the um, on the Filecoin blockchain and constructs the proof of ownerships, transcodes the files, constructs thumbnails, GIF files, and all other media assets that need to be written uh, for the NFT for it to be functional back onto the Filecoin blockchain. And the coolest thing about our project is that you can take the code that we release uh, on our GitHub, Videocoin GitHub, uh, to deploy a fully functional NFT platform on any Ethereum compatible blockchain and store the NFT on Filecoin. And we do all of this in a format that is fully compatible with established NFT marketplaces like OpenSea. So the token basically lives on an Ethereum compatible blockchain like Ethereum or Videocoin, which is also fully compatible with, um, with Ethereum. And the underlying media assets live on Filecoin. Let's jump right into the demo. For setup, we have done a bunch of activities uh, behind the scenes so that it gets easy for, for me to show this demo. Um, and because it's quite an involved process, we've created a GitHub repository uh, called Videocoin NFT Demo, which is available on our Videocoin GitHub, uh, where you can follow through all the steps without having to uh, see exactly what commands I'm typing here in the command window. Um, the things that we've done is we've set up Textile. Textile is one of the easiest ways for you to work with Filecoin. The guys at Textile.io have done an amazing job um, in, in getting a tool chain that is so simple to use. Um, on top of that, we've also deployed a ERC721 uh, a, a contract on uh, the RinkB testnet. The reason why we've deployed it on that testnet is, like I explained in the beginning, uh, our blockchain is fully Ethereum compatible. And for this demo, we wanted to show you how you can take the code that we run, uh, that we develop and deploy it on any Ethereum blockchain that you want. Uh, but when, but when, uh, but when you deploy, you have a choice between deploying it on any Ethereum compatible blockchain or on the Videocon blockchain. We've also created some uh, video files, uh, the assets that we'll use to uh, create the NFT. In this case, uh, we'll be using a 19th century um, uh, photograph, which is arguably one of the first videos ever. Because if you play these photographs in 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 series, you can actually see a galloping horse. Um, and we'll be using that as uh, for our demo today. And uh, we'll actually mint a token and, and submit it onto the, uh, the blockchain. And at the end of this all, you'll also see the, a preview of the Videocoin NFT platform itself, where we'll pull all of that data that we just now constructed and um, we'll present it nicely for us to all look at it. Next, we'll see how to create and store a video NFT. So uh, NFT has certain characteristics which are same across across many platforms, like a token ID, which is a unique identifier of the token, a name, a description, and all the under underlying media assets of the token itself. And the main innovation that we've made here is a proof of ownership. So alongside these standard components, we calculate a proof of ownership and write that pr proof of ownership onto uh, the Filecoin blockchain. So um, let us actually go ahead and create a proof of ownership. So in to my left, I have a terminal window open where I've typed a command. And you don't have to squint your eyes and type this command back because all of this is available in our open source repository. Um, but basically what I'm doing here is I'm taking an asset, which is the first film, um, the galloping horse that I talked about, um, and giving it a token ID. So here I'm giving it a, a token ID of 1729. Those of you who know what it is, it's actually the Raman numeral. Um, and uh, giving it a name, Galloping Horse, and uh, giving it a quick description. And these are all the, uh, these are the standard fields that an NFT requires. And from there, 
I'm going to go and uh, run this. So what happens now is it, it you, you saw a whole bunch of commands go through, uh, but what happened here was that we took the asset, the video file here that was available, um, encrypted it with the public key of the present token holder. Now the present hold token holder is the one who's creating the token. So we took the to cre creator's public key, encrypted the video uh, with his public key, but not straight away with this public key. So we, we used video DRM technologies, um, got a key, generated an ephemeral key, and they used that key to encrypt the video. And, and that key itself was encrypted using the, the token owner's public key. Now, because I'm doing the encryption using the public key, um, I don't have to do anything uh, other than um, having access to the public address because I can derive the public key from uh, a public Ethereum address. Now, after all of these, co uh, uh, these commands ran, what happened is now in, uh, we have a bunch of assets that have been created for us. And the two important files that for you to um, uh, uh, take note of is one file that is an encrypted video and another file which is an unencrypted video. So all of those details are available in the metadata um, that is constructed here. So in this case, the metadata that you can clearly see here, it's showing the name of the token um, and the description. And here is one of the first things that the that we constructed using transformations. Presently, it's running on the local node, but like uh, will be run on VideoCoin network, where we took the video, converted it into an image because it was a thumbnail. Uh, we took the video, we created an animation out of it. Basically, um, the video was transcoded back into the format that is uh, that that can be stored on uh, and stored and played back in different browsers. And we also created an external link which is encrypted. So this is this is our proof of ownership. So the proof of ownership all lies in this piece of encrypted video that we wrote back on uh, onto the hub here. So what happens here is this this link has the encrypted video and that was encrypted using the method I just described using the private key, um, using an ephemeral key that was encrypted using the public key of the owner. And from there, um, we also encrypt and store the DRM key. So like I explained, the DRM key is encrypted and written onto the uh, onto, um, IPFS. Now, obviously, because we're using Textile Hub, uh, we have not automated a few steps so that we can show a demo here. Uh, when, when in real life, all of these steps would be automated, um, and you wouldn't see these steps break down. But like here, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go and um, commit these files onto IPFS, and the command for that is hub bucket push hub is textile hub and then buck is bucket and then push. So when I say push, it says, okay, there are new four new files, uh, should I push it? And then you say yes, and then it'll write it down. So here, textile hub is pushing these files onto IPFS. And then if you want these files to actually land on Filecoin, you just have to write run another command here, which would take the files and archive it on Filecoin. Okay. Now that we have the assets, the proof of ownership created and stored on Filecoin, the next thing we have to do is actually mint the NFT on our Ethereum compatible blockchain and take that token and link it to the metadata we just now created, basically which is the uh, proof of ownership that we created. So I've now typed up the command for mint NFT, which is, uh, uh, which is again in our open source repository and you can see how it works. Uh, but what I'm doing here is I'm giving it a token ID. In this case, I'm calling it 1729. Again, it's the Raman numeral. Um, and uh, I'm giving it a metadata, which I just now created and pushed to Textile Hub. Um, you, uh, and you saw the command run. And then I, I, I picked up the ID, CID that Textile Hub generated and then created the link over here. And then I'm giving it a contract address. So the contract address here is again, is on, on rink B. And um, when I hit enter, it's gonna start mining the, um, the contract itself. Okay, now that the transaction has mined, let's take the 
transaction hash and see what happened on the Rinkeby testnet. So I copied the transaction hash and also let me bring up my browser here and uh, let's go and look for this. Um, okay, so this transaction is now mined. It uh, basically got mined by the mint and underscore NFT uh, Python script that we wrote. And let's, if you look at the data that is encrypted into this, uh, into this NFT that we just wrote, you'll see now that it actually has a textile hub um, link here. And this is the metadata that contains the proof of ownership, the media files, and all the other cool stuff that we'll talk about in just a bit. Now, before I show, um, before I go to the next step, let us see what um, the textile hub um, metadata we wrote. We saw how this looked in the command line, uh, but let's see how it looks when we actually visit this. And this is the JSON file that's directly being pulled from IPFS from Textile Hub. Um, there's the name, there's description, there is uh, an animation URL. This is basically the source media file, which is used by multiple platforms for displaying it. Um, and from there, it's also has the encrypted link. And this is the encrypted video that we talked about and the DRM key. So the encrypted link and the DRM key are the two components that create the proof of ownership. And we'll see what those two things mean in just a bit. But most importantly, remember that we gave this token an ID of 1729 um, that you can see here um, in uh, in the in the data that we that we sent um, into the contract. So you see 1729 here, and this is a transaction we just now mined. So now remember we created a token 1729. And then um, this is our demo. So we're gonna go and look up how the 1729 looks in our front end. So I'm gonna type 1729 here, and I'm gonna go and explore this NFT on uh, on our new NFT platform. And lo and behold, this is the first ever we NFT that we are showing you guys. We're super excited. So this is the galloping horse uh, that we just now created um, uh, using all of the multiple steps that we went through. and. A lot of the stuff here is um, uh, is placeholder for now. For example, the names, uh, the the currency in which the bidding is happening. But this gives you a sense of how the NFT was itself created. So this is the video NFT uh, getting pulled directly from IPFS and being dis uh, displayed here. And the description that we typed up available here. And now comes the really interesting part. You already saw how um, the token itself was stored on the Ethereum compatible Rinkby testnet, but let's click on view on Filecoin details. Now this is where uh, all of the work that we did uh, to get the metadata uh, constructed and stored. Now it's stored on IPFS and can be archived down into the Filecoin network. And because storage on Filecoin network is super cheap, and also these files are really, really small, um, uh, an NFT can live on Filecoin for a long, long time for a small amount of money. And uh, the encryption details here are all listed. So there's the DRM key listed, there's the animation URL, the, uh, the encrypted link, and this gives you all of the information that you need to uh, reconstruct the proof of ownership. And we also have the encryption details available here. Um, if you scan this QR code, you get the DRM key out, and from the DRM key, and you can use your private key and actually construct the um, NFT back. So this, you're looking at the first ever NFT that uh, that we created um, uh, live uh, and showed you guys, and then this uh, just now got minted. Um, so we'll next look at how these um, uh, NFTs uh, work with other existing marketplaces. Let me bring up OpenSea, and you can see how this NFT now looks on uh, on that platform. There you go. This is the NFT we just now created on our platform. Um, it is completely interoperable with um, with uh, OpenSea. It's showing the animation that we just now stored here. Um, it has the token ID, and it has. And if you click on the um, uh, click on the contract, you can see all the other NFTs that we have created while we were testing this uh, to do this demo. Now, the reason why this is really important is because the NFT ecosystem is so big. Um, there's a lot of players. And, uh, and uh, at the same time, the industry is just beginning. So it's important for us to be able to interoperate and uh, for people who create plat tokens on our platform or use our platform to deploy their own NFT marketplace, uh, then they should be able to interoperate with other platforms like OpenSea. And this shows how um, we directly 
um, can, with very little effort, integrate into OpenSea. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is actually establish that the proof of ownership uh, works, right? Like the whole thing that we did with uh, with this video, doing the proof of ownership, and you saw the encryption details uh, on Filecoin, you saw the token details on our VideoCoin network. Um, the last step that we have to do is literally make sure that the whole proof of ownership we did actually works. And for that, let me bring back up my terminal. Uh, and uh, here, if you see, the list of files here. So that is the first film, which is a film that we just used to create the NFT, and then the encrypted first film. So encrypted first film is basically the uh, proof of ownership that we created. Um, so what I'll do here is um, I'll use um, a, a tool that we have published. It's called DRM uh, ECIES because that's the encryption key that we use, encryption scheme that we use. Um, so we will, uh, we just have to uh, run this and then you'll get um, the key out. So before we do that, let me show you something where FFmpeg uh, is uh, is the command that we use to create the videos, right? Like let's say FFmpeg, if I ran FFmpeg on um, the first film, uh, you'll see, uh, this is a bit of technical information, but you'll see clearly here that you have uh, all the video information, it's showing the duration, it's showing the start rate and, and time and everything. That basically means that this video is not encrypted and FFmpeg can freely read it. However, if I run the same command on encrypted first film, which was the output from our asset creation, uh, you'll see that uh, it had a lot of trouble uh, getting into uh, the video here. You see all of these error messages, um, it's getting there because it just cannot decrypt the video, it cannot play it. Um, so now you need a key to decrypt the video. So the way we're going to get the key is uh, using our Python uh, decryption tool. To decrypt the file and check for proof of ownership, we've created uh, a file that's also available in the open source repository uh, called DRM ECIES. It, it is basically a key mechanism that, it, that takes the private key uh, that I'll supply in the script and you'll see it's available in the script. Uh, so I'll I'll supply the private key. It will use the encryption key, the ephemeral encryption key I created to encrypt the video and create um, and decrypt that and to create a decryption key. So I'm going, when I run this uh, Python script now, I basically got an output which is showing me the uh, decryption key. Now we're going to run the same ffmpeg command with uh, to try and see if the video is decodable by providing it the decryption key. So the decryption key we just now got uh, I'm going to paste it here and give it an encrypted first film. That's the film that was encrypted. So remember when we ran this uh, this video file through FFmpeg just a second back, uh, FFmpeg was not able to decode it because the file was encrypted. Now I've given it the decryption key that we just now created, um, extracted from the proof of ownership. And when I run it, there you go. So now the video is fully decoded and you can see uh, all the duration and all the information, no error messages. I know it's not um, it's not the ideal way to show this, but imagine you had a player and you tr double clicked on uh, on on the on the first film, it would would play it would play totally fine. But if you double clicked on the encrypted video, it would not play. And by uh, wrapping it uh, with the decryption key, um, the player was able to play the file. But the decryption key is only derivable using my private key. And that private key is uh, provided to the script from um, uh, as a command line argument. And it uses my private key, decrypts the proof of ownership, uh, decrypts the DRM key, um, gives me the actual DRM key, which I then use and decrypt the video and play back. Now this forms an irrefutable proof of ownership because um, uh, uh, let me bring back up my browser. It's an irrefutable proof of ownership because when you see these encryption details um, that's available on the Filecoin network, um, let's say you have to prove and establish that you own this NFT. Uh, all you have to do is pull the encrypted uh, video content that was on Filecoin network, um, bring it down and uh, use FFmpeg to decrypt and get the encryption key out. And with that key, you'll be the only person who'll be able to decrypt that video. And this is exactly where uh, VideoCoin Network uh, comes into the picture here. 
uh, all the encryption, decryption, re-encryption, each time there's uh, NFT changes hands, there's actual re-encryption. All of that is a lot of compute intensive work. And we'll be leveraging our workers to do all of this work. And the beauty of this is because we use the public keys, our workers can encrypt and re-encrypt using the public keys and um, there is no leakage of information or no data that is lost because all of this information is uh, publicly available. So that is our demo, folks. This, uh, this is an extremely exciting time for us uh, to be sharing our first demo with you guys. Um, and uh, stay tuned to our Medium channels. Read our Medium channels for more detailed explanation of proof of ownership. Uh, please follow us on, on Twitter and um, stay tuned on our project. Thank you so much for watching.